Howdy, it's uh, Hakasis, and uh, doing a quick video to answer some questions about the uh, schematics and setup that we had at the at Eric Dollard's shop doing our telluric and seismic transmission experiments in uh, June of this 2023. So the picture here is the uh, same as on the video. I'll try to attach the uh, original uh, Q&A conference. The primary purpose of this was to build a Tesla coil and matching system so that we could use the earth as an antenna rather than using the air as an antenna. And the, with an optimized system we could theoretically transfer many amps of current into the ground and through some radiation pattern pick that up at some distance away using non-conventional, non-electromagnetic radiation. So. The setup here, uh, the primary centerpiece, we'll start with the uh, radio. This is an ICOM 746 Pro. This puts out about 5 to 100 watts going to a uh, tube amplifier, which goes to a Pi tuner. The Pi tuner goes to a matching transformer. The matching transformer goes to uh, two sides of the matching transformer. One side goes to the very low impedance ground. That's a uh, several thousand gallon uh, fuel or water tanks, steel water tanks, and there's several leads that go off uh, that attach to that, and the reason for that is the express purpose of minimizing impedance. Uh, absolute impedance lower, absolute lowest impedance is ideal. So the lower end of the matching transformer goes to the ground, upper end goes to this Tesla coil. This is a Tesla extra coil or a conventional quarter wave resonant air core coil. The upper end of that coil goes to uh, went to a variable capacitor, and on the other end of that was the overhead aluminum aerial. Uh, aluminum overhead aerial is not meant to be a transmission line. It's actually meant to be more of a uh, tuning line, or it's meant to be a tuning line to help adjust the frequency, the resonant frequency of the Tesla extra coil. Not designed to be radiating. So this is the rough schematic, or this is the diagram of how it was configured. So initially we have the power coming from the ICOM 746 Pro uh, ham radio. This puts out roughly 50 ohms impedance output. Uh, we had this going through an Ameritron AL811 uh, tube-based radio amplifier. This is going to an MFJ969 Pi-based tuner. That fed into the primary side of uh, what was a couple number 43 ferrite rings that was mounted as a wound as a matching transformer. So there were six turns on the radio side and there was two turns on the transmitter side or on the uh, on the coil side. So one lead of that the coil side goes to our tank ground. Again you want to maintain the lowest impedance practical. Uh, a single ground rod put into the ground or a single very long ground rod to the water table is probably not going to cut it. Uh, lowest impedance possible means several ground rods staggered over a significant distance or uh, maybe a ship or a very large plate or buried objects, buried tanks uh, because uh, the lower the ground that you get, the lower ground impedance, the more current is going to be transferred back and forth in this setup. So uh, in this case, in uh, Eric's case, the DC resistance to this is less than one ohm, and the active uh, impedance of it, I believe, is less than two or three ohms at uh, two megacycles. So the other side of this, the upper end of that goes to the lower ring of the Tesla extra coil. Uh, that is seen here as this lower ring. That feeds to the Tesla extra coil, or all of these uh, copper tubing rings. The top of that copper tube leads to the upper dielectric loading ring, which is this upper lead. That feeds into a variable capacitor, which is this uh, two-plate capacitor here. Uh, the top plate is uh, can be rotated, so this both of these plates can be dialed closer in or further apart. And then the upper end of this capacitor was attached to the overhead aerial. Uh, and the purpose of that is to help tune the system and allow you allow us to get a specific frequency within the two uh, within the 160 meters, uh, slightly below two megacycle ham radio band. 
Uh, without that, the coil by itself was resonant somewhere in the 2.3 megacycle range, and we required that in order to help bring the frequency down uh, to what we needed. Uh, if we didn't have the overhead, if we didn't have the variable capacitor, you could actually add more turns to the coil. Uh, or sometimes doing simple things like raising the coil up higher, lowering it lower, uh, changing, uh, adding more loading to the top or more loading to the bottom. These will all affect the frequency, but unfortunately not to a region that you can very easily tune. So a lot of times you have to use something like this uh, variable capacitor set up in order to bring things in line. And thankfully it was pretty close that uh, we were able to get into down to that region. So variable capacitor leads to the overhead aerial. Uh, again, the aerial in this case is not meant to be a transmitting aerial. This is meant to be essentially the sink, or meant to be as the ground. The main power in this system is meant to be transmitted through the ground, with the extra coil serving as the counterpoise against that. <coughs> so to talk a little bit about the transmission setup, uh, we only use the Ameritron to get some of the initial higher power experiments to about 350, 400 watts. Uh, this can be omitted. Uh, you don't need that much power, at least in our setup. The uh, 969 Pi tuner, uh, that worked pretty good for our setup, but uh, ideally you want to, we'll say you can also experiment with a twin T tuner, uh, if you have one of those. Uh, the twin T tuner generally has a ferrite ring uh, configuration anyway, so it makes it a lot easier to impedance match to very low systems. So basically, uh, you may or may not need the ferrite matching transformer. Uh, the ferrite matching transformer is because the impedance on here is very, very low, something like 2 to 10 ohms. And uh, usually the uh, impedance on a ham radio setup is in the 300 ohms. So the, the radios are usually, it's usually meant to tune up impedance and not tune down. So a Pi tuner was not ideal for this, so that's why we needed the matching transformer. Uh, talking about the extra coil itself, so, oh, and here's a couple more. This is the 746 Pro leading to the tube amplifier, leading to the Pi tuner, leading to the matching transformer, which led to the bottom ring of the radio. So, uh, as you can see, we actually use multiple leads in here to help decrease the resistance and decrease the impedance. In this case, it's plugged into a... Uh, uh, vector network analyzer so we could uh, help tune the initial frequency. And uh, in this case, uh, this was a uh, thermal amp meter or an RF amp meter that uh, helped us gauge the ground current, which also helps us measure the impedance of the system. <coughs> uh, again, talking to the extra coil. So the extra coil, uh, the general parameters you want on this is you want a roughly 1 to 1 height to width ratio. The reason you want that is to help balance the dielectric and magnetic fields. If your coil is very tall and very thin, it'll, have a, it'll tend to dominate in the electrostatic field. So it'll have a lot of electrostatic potential, but not a lot of magnetic. Uh, likewise, if you make the coil, coil very short and stubby, very fat, uh, it will have a, tend to dominate in the magnetic field and uh, have a very weak electrostatic component. So by keeping a roughly one-to-one -one height to width ratio, that helps join the entire system in, in one solid circuit and uh, generally improves the Q factor and overall performance. But again, you can experiment and deviate and you might learn a lot about in the process. Uh, you can make uh, systems like that work that are completely flat pancake coils and you can make them extremely long uh, long and thin, uh, you'll just have to tune differently, you'll get imp different impedance characteristics, but uh, the one-to-one -one will give you a good starting point. Next thing, uh, you want a roughly 50% wire spacing to the wire diameter. It's 50% between turns, or roughly 150% center to center. So if you had one eighth inch tubing, you would want roughly one sixteenth inch between each turn or uh, I, whatever the math is, 150% uh, of 1 eighth inch uh, from center to center. The, what happens if you space those close together uh, or further apart, it doesn't necessarily affect the efficiency, but it will affect the impedance. 
Uh, if you space them very close together, you'll have a very low impedance coil that can be hard to match to. If you space them very far apart, it'll have very, very, very high impedance, which will also be hard to match to. So roughly 50%, but of course you can deviate from that quite a bit and it'll still perform quite admirably. As you see here, we're actually about twice of what the ideal is and we were still able to get it to perform quite well. But the main critical component is your tank ground. That should be the lowest practical thing and ideally less than one ohm. So good luck and God help you. <laughs> But uh, anyway, I hope that answers some of these questions here, and uh, good luck, and uh, I hope to see other people uh, reporting the results. So, thanks for watching.